to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Back with you. Excited to be here. We have a good show for you today. Lots to talk about. We had another trade break. We just made the comment on the show that the league always schedules their trades around our show for us. Mm. And the league heard that. You poked the bear. And the league said, no, we are in control. And so we got to talk about Devontae Adams and that big trade, but we did not get to talk about Amari Cooper. And so that'll be part of today's episode. Before we get into things, I need to come out and make a public apology. Oh, thank goodness. I don't know what it's for. But I, I, just, I think I know where we're going here. I, um, I really have no interest in being associated with the referees of the National Football League. That's not, that's not what I heard yesterday. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you yeah. were all about the rules and restrictions. I am I think you actually said, get off my lawn. Yeah, you're half zebra. To all the fans out there on the lawn tailgating, and you're like, that's too much fun. This is part of why I need to make the public <laughs> apology is I have no interest in being associated with the, the, the linesmen and the stripes and the the rules, I I see the error of my ways. Okay. I would like to publicly apologize for going no fun league for about two minutes yesterday. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to accept that apology, Andy. On behalf of the people, I accept your apology. Welcome to Team Fun. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very important. Um, so I'm sorry, everybody. I want. I don't care if the rules are followed anymore. Nice. I am only here to be entertained. Yeah. And honestly, I think we get rid of the refs and it's animal it, ball out it's there. It's more about what is a good rule and what is not. Exactly, Mike. That's it. I want them behind the like, line of scrimmage. Like pass interference? It's a good rule. Yeah. Shouldn't be able to just clobber a guy. And then just these these things that have nothing to do with the play in reality. Stop it. Stop it, taking away DK Metcalf 50-yard touchdowns. You know what I would love to see? I would love to see that when they throw a flag, that they have the option to pick it up if it did not affect the play. Like, I've thought that before. Like, if there's holding, but it was on the right side of the line. Like, you know, you see the holding, you throw the flag. You got to yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But if then it was determined the play ran, ran to the left and that had absolutely no effect on the play, you pick it up. Can you, it should be awesome. Yeah. Uh, after further review, I have changed my mind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have changed my mind for fun. <laughs> well, Touchdown. We have, we have uh, the advanced stats. Right? We have the... The play was too good. I'm going to let it stand. What is the AWS uh, Next Gen? Next Gen Stats. We we have the ability now when we're watching football. AWS has proof. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> shout out to your distant past. Yes. Um, and your boy, Aaron Rodgers. Um, when, you, when you look at AWS now and you watch an Amazon game on Thursday Night Football, they have the ability to predict based on the visuals and the AI of the history of the NFL, what players are going to blitz yeah, it's based really on cool. formation. That technology could easily apply to did the penalty happen in the quadrant of the field of irrelevance? Right. You 100%. could actually you could actually decide that the penalty isn't a penalty if it literally didn't affect anything. We could, but you're also talking about the league that was testing out uh what chips or just ways to digitally track did you get a first down? They're like, oof. This, no, no. We got, we got to have these metal chains that are kind of they're put in there. It's pretty close. I do think it's they, pretty close to the right spot. I That'll think, happen. Yeah, it'll happen. They'll move to that. It, it's 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 a slow progress, but let's let's progress. And I I like that. Let's just have the machine tell us if it didn't affect the play, then it then it can stand. All right, are we feeling better? Yeah, yeah I feel yeah, much better. Feel Thank you for that apology, Andy. Yeah, uh, we have Hungry for More momentarily. If you want to follow the show, you can do so on X at the FF Ballers. You can follow Jason at Jason FFL. Mike is at FF Hitman. And you can follow me at Andy Holloway. 
Thursday night preview, I'm hoping there is something special that we're not expecting to see that happens on Thursday night because right now there's just injuries and offenses with rookie quarterbacks that it makes the evening feel a little bit sketch. But um, let's jump in. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. Hungry for more? We're looking for uh, some rising stars, some players we've seen little bits and pieces of, and we want to see a lot more. And I, I don't know if there's a player that fits this description more perfectly than the Costco sample of the NFL. And that is Christian Watson. <laughs> give give you a taste. Yeah, you don't get the whole meal ever with Christian Watson, whether it's injuries, inconsistencies. Um, I have never been a Watson guy. That is true. When you when you said you wanted more of Christian Watson in in this show before, you know, when we were prepping the show, I was like, well, let's hear that because I you've only besmirched his name. Well, Dontavian Wicks is hurt. And uh, Romeo Dobbs, while a great possession receiver, is just that. He's a role player in the offense. And Jaden Reed, obviously, is um, you know a jack of all trades, end arounds and and big plays and everything in between. I just think there's opportunity and room in this offense for Christian Watson without Dontavian Wicks to maybe, maybe inch his way towards a more consistent big play type of player. He had four targets and 60% of snaps last week. He scored on Arizona, and he helps this offense, and Jordan Love has been slinging it. So I am hungry for more Christian Watson. I don't want just the Costco sample. I want the whole meal for the rest of the season, and I want to see what he's got. Well, and you really wanted him on waivers today because you made a, a great trade for your team yesterday, but you lost a little depth, and you thought he'd be a good flex option, so you went hard after Christian Watson. And I'm happy to report you did not get him. Yeah, a very smart manager in our league bid $1 more than the fab I have. Yeah. I just realized that that was a personal attack on me. I just <laughs> I, realized that was the bid. I hope there the are The bid more. was exclu – it's a division made. It's a smart move, but it was exclusively to take him from me. Hmm. Nice. Which would in infer that they knew how much you were going to spend on other players. What do you mean? Well, because you got, you got a quarterback for 10. Yeah. But but see, I actually set up my waivers today in a structured pattern of like I had multiple bids on Caleb Williams, which you can do yes. as long as you have players to drop. So I had a high dollar on Caleb, then I had a low dollar on Caleb okay. with a player drop I gotcha. in case I got the first player. I got gotcha. you. So okay. I would have got them both if he didn't ruin my life. But anyway, very excited to see what Christian Watson can do. And and you know if you're in a a league where you need some explosive potential on a week-to-week -week basis. He does fit that mold, just like a Rashid Shaheed did. Um, players that have big play, Darius Slayton, when he's got opportunities, he's not Elijah Moore is what I'm saying. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Any, any, any moment could be a 50-yard touchdown, and there's not, you know, there's not 20 guys just sitting on waivers or, or – easy to acquire that that can do that. My there's, there's also just in for Green Bay, there's no one who is dominating targets. It's Jordan Love. The, the real answer for the Packers is just Jordan Love and then you hope that you played the white the the right wide receiver at the on the right week, but it's like right. Yes, not having right. a not having a true number 1 though gives you that option every single week. Like it's Jaden Reed Jaden Reed's the Jane best Reed, one Jane of Reed's them. Jaden Reed's the best one, but he's, he's sitting at a twenty percent target share. This yeah. isn't like this isn't an elite player uh, in terms of well, you we got to give him twenty eight percent of the targets no matter what. They're, they're finding the guy who's open. Yeah, my hungry for more um, in truth is Troy Franklin, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go with, I'm not gonna go there. I'm just saying to, you want a touchdown you just machine went there. You want a touchdown machine? He's it's coming. Um, no, the the player that I'm hungry for more is is almost a reminder and and a um a a wake up call for a player that has really poofed and disappeared this season. I'm talking about last year's running back two, if you can remember that far, Raheem Mostert, who came out in week one, had nine opportunities, forty four percent then left with a chest injury, was gone for the next several weeks, and then in week five, and this is what I think people 
I, I know even myself, you know, we're, we're watching all these games, taking everything in, watching the film afterwards, doing all the analytics, everything we can do. And I was surprised afterwards to be like, whoa, did you know that Raheem Moster had 21 opportunities? You know, he was given, uh, I think, 18 carries, 98 total yards. Um, Raheem Moster was the running back 22 without Tua. Um, without A-chan as well. Sure, without A-chan, but he looked good. Like, this is a team that has not been able to run the ball. Even with A-chan, without Tua, they have not been able to move the offense at all. And I talked about this with A-chan. His ability and size does not fit a team that is going to stack the box. Like, that's just never going to work for him. That's why it hasn't been working for these last few weeks. When Tua comes back up and he, you know, and the, and the field is spread and defenders are, you know, two safeties are super far back and they're not able to stack the box, Devon Achan is going to eat again. But right now, right now, this is built for a tackle-breaking, big-bodied fast back, and that's Whoa. Raheem Mostert. And so breaking big body pass back. Yeah. And, and he's coming up this week against the Indianapolis Colts who have not been able to stop most anything. And so I, I think you've got to remember, like, this is a player that you can start this week. I think Raheem Mostert. Oh yeah. Against the Colts is a very good flex. So I'm excited to see a little bit more of him. He might be out on certain waivers, um, you know, cause they had their bye week I think he's about 70% rostered. So he's, he's not readily available but that's just a player that's like don't forget he's really yeah he had 20 plus touchdowns last year Tua could be back um not this coming week but the next week against the Arizona Cardinals so I think Moster is just someone I'm 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 hoping gets going I'm hoping he gets a lot of the work and and continues to look good I like the fact that when you're talking about Devon Achan you can then say Raheem Mostert is big Right, no, Cause, giant. Because Mostert is not big. He's not like a 225. <laughs> That's Jalen Wright. Yes, but uh, he, Mostert he's is someone that – compared to A-Chan. He's big in the sense that he can run through uh, r run through contact a lot easier than A-Chan can. Uh, I'm going to go with Drake May, rookie quarterback for the New England Patriots, because, look, it's his first start, and we already have a top 12 quarterback finish from him. This is great news for – not just the Patriots. It's great news for teams that play against the Patriots that it is no longer, okay, well, Jacoby and the offense, they're not going to get anything done because uh, – or, or my team against Jacoby, there's no chance for a shootout. But 243-3, and three, 38 yards on the ground. Uh, we have a note here uh, that Drake May's first career touchdown pass to Booty it traveled 51.7 yards in the air. That is the longest completion by a Patriots quarterback over the last three seasons in his first game. This is just its such good news. He plays the Jags, which I guess wild to think about. No, I, in certain situations, you could stream Drake May. Like it is, he's my stream of the week. Yeah, it it is a it it, it is a viable play this week. So just. Hungry for the Patriots offense. Maybe they have uh, a guy here that can actually get something done. He's athletic, so he's going to be under pressure a lot because of the Patriots offensive line. But he can do something about it. Like I said, 38 yards on the ground. So I'm, I'm hungry for more. I want to see what's going to go on uh, just with the rest of the Patriots and still waiting for the wide receiver room to shake out as Jalen Polk went from 100% of the routes two weeks ago to – kind of doghoused here by by the Patriots and the coaching staff. See if that gets back on track. It's just, I think it's going to be really fun to watch now how this plays out. All right, that was Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats, where you can get the best deals on game day food all season long. Uber Eats, the official on-demand delivery partner of the NFL. Order now. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Okay, so not long after we released yesterday's episode of this show, we got some pretty exciting news. Um, freed from prison, Amari Cooper <laughs> to the Bills. When you overcome the shadow of the Dark Lord uh, and you're allowed yeah. to uh, you know, go away from he who shall not be named, only good things are going to happen for you. Welcome to the resistance, Amari Cooper. <laughs> yeah, the Am resistance. <laughs> You're mixing analogies. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, You're I nerd know. enough to oh, to do better than that. 
All dark lords apply. <laughs> Amari Cooper to the Bills. The Bills get him for a uh, third and a seventh. They get Amari in a sixth. So he has been freed. He is uh, under $1 million of cost to the Bills, which means, you know, that's a pretty good price for 10 games. And they really need him. They really do. We talked yesterday about how Dalton Kincaid has not been able to step up. They they invested you know a high draft pick in Keon Coleman who has who, who has shown flashes and has ability, but he is not a one. They need someone who can go out there and create separation, um, you know, in the the medium and deep areas of the field. Amari Cooper has been doing that consistently this year. Uh, sometimes he has not caught the ball when it's arrived, but I think he's always surprised when it's arrived, and so yeah, now and he's, he's going to be expecting that ball to be near his hands. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fantasy expectations. This is this is good for Amari Cooper. It's been uh, you've been in the you've been in the, uh, the the turmoil of of Watson for a while, starting Cooper because of his target totals, but getting no output, and that's been the uh, the essence of Amari Cooper in twenty twenty four. Just to bring up the whole picture, though, for Amari Cooper, he is going to a team that is twenty ninth in passing. Um, that is 32nd, dead last in plays per game. And that is, I believe, fourth or fifth in running. So the identity of the Bills since Joe Brady arrived last season, even when they had another downfield separator, two of them actually, Gabe Davis and Stephon Diggs, the identity of the Bills became the running game. And now they just discovered that Ray Davis is a really good fit in this offense on top of James Cook. So I'm wondering what the expectations should be. I, You know, I have him in two leagues. I've already traded him in one of them. I made the comment to you yesterday, maybe I should trade Amari Cooper on the, on the promise of this amazing success moving to the Bills. So I did. But what are your true expectations for where he slots in rest of year? We did this with Adams yesterday. Yeah, I mean, this this is a clear and obvious upgrade for him, but that doesn't make him, you know, some top 10 wide receiver. Um, and if you can trade him as if he is going to be a top 10 wide receiver, then you should always capitalize on that. Like, you traded him, but you traded him for – in a, in a package piece and received Jamar Chase, you know, so yeah, I feel good about oh, that. You, and, and you should, it was, it was a great trade. Um, the, you know, the, the issue here is like, they won't always need to throw the ball. And when they don't need to throw the ball, they're, they're not, their identity like, is not changing. Joe, Bur uh, Joe Brady really ruined things for our <laughs> sweet, sweet, high powered bills offense. And this is good news. I think pretty much across the board for the Bills. I know yesterday we talked about how Garrett Wilson takes a hit with the arrival of Devontae Adams. The reason for that is because Garrett Wilson has literally led the league in targets. His his volume has been what has really propped him up for fantasy. He's good. He's not going away. Whereas Dalton Kincaid, uh, Keon Coleman, these guys have shown themselves not able to be the the absolute one for their team. And I, I think this is good news for the offense as a whole. Like, Keon Coleman can now stop trying to be the separator, the Stephon Diggs, the the X receiver in this offense that he wasn't really built to be coming out of college. And he can play the Gabe Davis role. Go stand in the end zone and get these, you know, a little bit easier one-on-one -on -one, uh, targets where, you know, you come down with that 50-50 ball. Mike, the wide receivers for the Bills through six games – ranked 27th in fantasy points. They average a combined 21.4 fantasy points Oof, per game gross. for the entire group. Obviously throwing the football to the tight end a little bit uh, more than than average, but do you think Cooper is going to be an every week start, and does it begin this week, or does it take a couple weeks? I would imagine it takes a couple weeks. Uh, I would put Cooper – yeah, he'll be a weekly start, a, like a top 24 type of a start. So it – that's a very valuable player. It's just the, I think, the when when the trade went out, it's it's Amari Cooper who has been a fantasy superstar in the past to Josh Allen who is a fantasy superstar. So you're like the the antennae just go way up in the air. Like yes, what could this be? And then it's take a moment, and this the team is not changing who they are. 
But I do. Yeah, think, they're four and two. But I do think Amari Cooper can come in and be like a. He, the, we were talking about how Jane Reed's not getting that target share. Cooper could get that, but it's just what is the size of that pie? Well, let me tell you where Josh Allen is through six weeks, if this would be helpful for you. Because he's had three top five weeks and three 20 or below weeks. He's on pace for 442 passing attempts. Yeah, he's throwing the ball 26 times a week right now. He's on pace for 3,200 passing yards. 3,200? 3,200. He, he has, for the last several years, been a 4,500-yard He's throw. averaging 193.3 passing yards per game. He's had games of 139, 131, 180. He has not thrown for 300 this year. So, obviously, this chicken or egg to a degree, but the, what removes that chicken or egg situation for me is the fact he had Diggs and Gabe Davis and they, I, the identity changed last year while they had those players to throw the ball to. Yeah, we it, this 100% I agree with you. Uh, I do think that they'll have more success throwing the ball, so Josh Allen will throw a little bit more, but we already saw this system last year not throw the ball a ton. So, um, And this week, this week I would pump the brakes a little bit on Amari Cooper. Not that he can't get a nice touchdown, you know, and have a great first week. He's a flex option to me this week. Um, but I've got him like near wide receiver thirty, which I think he I think bright days are ahead for him this season. I love this for him. But coming in week one, it you know, at least with Devontae Adams, you're coming over you've played with Nathaniel Hackett, the offensive coordinator, with this quarterback. There's not gonna be the same learning curve for you know Devonte Adams coming over in week one that there will be for Amari Cooper who you know is arriving and it's like gonna play soon they'll have some packages for him but I'd be shocked if he's out there you know 90 percent of snaps week one okay that makes a lot of sense so big trade in the NFL big trade for maybe Josh Allen's floor coming up a little bit in this offense I'm going to blitz the rest of this news real quick uh we do know Devonte Adams is going to make his debut on Sunday Night Football Against Russell Wilson. <laughs> oh, so that's, that's must-see TV. Yeah. Cam Akers was traded to the Vikings. They just don't need him in Houston with Mixon back. They already brought Damian Pierce back, who took his backup role, and they have a Goomba Wale for third down. He was the fourth man in that offense. He goes back to the Vikings where he already was. Yeah, that's... The Vikings have a hurt Aaron Jones, and they add some depth. That's the question to yes. me. Like the fact that Aaron Jones uh, has has been hurt. He was working off to the side, and so I thought he'd be good to go this week. The fact that they went and traded for Cam Akers, maybe that's just hey, we need to have some depth. But also maybe it's I'm not sure that that Jones is ready, and we need another player this week. So it gives me a little bit of heebie-jeebies. Yeah, that that makes sense. Clyde edwards helaire returned from injured reserve, or designated to return for the Chiefs. Here we go. James Cook has a chance to play this week against the Titans. Most which means players I, do. <laughs> I have a chance to start him in okay. in my leagues. You put him right back yeah, in. Yeah, if he, if if he plays, you start him. And um, the target right now being put out there, at least by the Athletics Joe person, says Jonathan Brooks could be back by maybe week nine as a target. Which means they're taking it slow, as they have done this whole time. They're not rushing him back, which also means when he's back, they're not going to rush him into – workhorse volume I still think at the you know the last month of the season you're going to see some special stuff but might be a little too late for most fantasy managers you know, maybe fantasy playoffs but getting there he might not be that helpful that was today's news and notes presented by USAA insurance learn more at usaa.com slash insurance we'll take a break we'll hit the Thursday night game All right, before we jump into the Thursday night football, I did there was one other side of the trade, believe it or not. The Cooper trade wasn't from nothing. Right. I mean, close to it. The, Very close the to it. The Browns have have said that they are resigning their fate of having Deshaun Watson at quarterback. I saw one of the most incredible stats ever about the Browns. They had a two year run. Remember they ended up with Miles Garrett and Baker Mayfield. The sure. number one pick, number one pick. Yeah. During that two-year run, I believe they were one in thirty-one. Like I think that was a record. I think they were one in thirty-one across two years, or something close to that. Or they had a stretch of being one in thirty-one. You can go vet that. That's the number I saw. Something like that. It, it, they didn't win a lot of games. They got yeah. the number one pick twice. The offensive numbers for the team that went one in thirty or one in thirty-one, whatever it was, two in thirty. 
the offensive numbers for that team were much, much better than the offensive numbers for the Browns today. The team that won no games, the team that got back-to-back number one picks had a much, much better offense. They were over 300 yards a game. Everyone has a much, much better offense. I mean, I just want to be clear that this is historical. This is not a blip. We yeah. talk about the gap you have to go from worst of the worst of the worst to just okay. Every single team in the NFL has scored 20 points so far at least once except one, and they are losing Amari Cooper. This is a really bad offense. Where, by, by where bad. do you find value there? Is it well, I saw a great tweet from Andy Barons about um, – this is just a quote from him. He says, Jerry Judy jumps from wide receiver 53 to wide receiver 51 <laughs> in my ranks following the Cooper trade. I mean <laughs> – Oh, that's good, Andy. Judy is the wide receiver who benefits. Elijah Moore can't do anything. They, this is Njoku. To me, it's, it's just David Njoku is going to end up with a lot of targets. And garbage time targets and targets that – you know, are easy to catch. Yeah. He's not going to do much with them, but if you're in a full PPR, I think you're going to have a lot of um, Evan Ingram type of lines rest of season they from went, Njoku. They did go 1-31. and 31. That I, was the record. They I, went 0-16 uh, with Hugh Jackson and 1-15 oh, with Hugh Jackson. That was your, that was your coach. Jackson. Yeah, he's great. The only player I have interest in on the Browns is Nicholas Chubb. I, I, so you don't have interest in Njoku? I, have I don't understand zero. that. Well, how can you that, have no that's interest? That's wild. I have because Deshaun Watson sucks, but, dude. He sucks. Yeah, but like Najoku will be fine. Yeah, Najoku should be. Those are the those are the he targets. He should be fine. You know who? Amari Cooper is. Amari Cooper still a very good player. Yes. And okay, that's the but, but Amari Cooper is down, down the, the field. field. Yeah. yeah. Najoku is going to be across the line of scrimmage, and he's going to get still, the, seven to ten targets. I, for for me, would you rather the, have David Najoku or Dalton Kincaid? Dalton Kincaid. David Njoku or Pat Frymuth? Mm, Njoku. He, uh, the, I mean, he did. With Russ coming back, it might be the Muth. Wow. Might be the I, Muth. Di I didn't realize you were so it, I just anti Njoku. It's going to be, for this. my opinion is, it will be nothing but pain. And okay. the, pro the, process, the process says I need to keep starting David Njoku, uh, who has been on the Browns for nearly a decade. We saw the best of him with Joe Flacco. I know the numbers for, like, Last year, what you had some some showings of like, oh, it's it's been okay with Watson, but years and years and years of nothingness, and so that's my fear is everything will say this should work, this should work, but like you you just pointed out, historically bad offense that just got worse. Like yeah, teams don't have to worry about Amari Cooper anymore. I, I defenses. I I can see the path. I I will not sit here and say that there is no way that Njoku is not a uh, good rest of season start because of course he has he who shall not be named trying to throw him the ball and I do mean trying um but like Amari Cooper has been super super disappointing I think the difference here is like if if Najoku was a wide receiver I'd be pretty much out like Judy right exactly but like it's not a, just a matter of depth of field it's a matter of what's the what's the bar you have to hop to be a good start because if you could have started Amari Cooper as a tight end, you'd be like, dude, yes, because tight ends suck. That's absolutely true. And, like, Najoku, before he got hurt, he only played 37% of snaps in week one, still finished top 10 tight end, was four for 44 in, like, a quarter of the game. He was. And then he, last week, seven targets. I am still of the opinion that I would grin and bear it and put him in my lineup. I, so Cincinnati this week, but then at Baltimore, the Chargers by week, the Saints, Pittsburgh, Denver, Pittsburgh. Kansas City. That's the that's the Those run. Are gear. almost all good for tight ends. I know that they're they're good defenses. Like Baltimore is a good defense. Kansas City is a great defense. Kansas City is like the worst defense for against yeah, tight ends. I, Just check down in garbage time. They're going to be in garbage time in every one of those games. He won't have ten yards of reception. He'll dream of ten yards of reception. <laughs> but you know, if if you can get six seven receptions at tight end on a weekly basis, Mike it, Mike is hands off of anything that yeah. Voldemort's aura has touched. That is correct. I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday Night Breakdown. Also known as the Troy Franklin coming out party, baby. Oh, this Thursday. Yeah, you're really, just, you're putting a lot into this. I, look, I'm just happy that this. He caught a 20-yard pass. 
I'm I'm happy that he's on the field. No, I'm yeah. not, <laughs> no, I'm, my my bar is lower than it's, that, Andy. It's baby steps this right is, now. The fact that he, uh, <laughs> yeah, the fact that this is a rookie who has not been involved at all, and then last week, you know, got 65 percent of the snaps. The coach comes out and says we're going to see more of him because we're a young team and we need to get our young players on the field. I think he is a talented player. I think he's dealing with a hard transition to the NFL. But the fact, you know, he got a touchdown last week. He's on the field. I just want to see him. I want to see him have the chance. I didn't think we were going to maybe ever see that based on how training camp went for him, Vele winning the job as a, as a fellow rookie over him. And so now that he's on the field, I'm excited to see the chance. Well, Vele's on the field as well. Cortland Sutton's on the field. And the Saints matchup this week is an interesting one for – you know, the do you start anybody category. Um, you know, Bub Means looks like he's the number one wide receiver. He means business. For the New Orleans Saints. Busted. And, uh, oh, hey, look at you. Yeah. You got busted. I got busted. <laughs> <laughs> Bub Means was a fifth-round pick. He went four for 45 in a touchdown last week. Hey, we, we have backup quarterback, backup wide receiver narrative. In full force right here. Well, and, and it's two rookies in this game, Spencer Rattler and Bo Nix. Um, I got a snake, man. This is a game where we don't have players to talk about, just buttons to push. <laughs> um, De Devon Vele or Bub Means, who would you start in this game? Last week, Vele had been a healthy scratch previously, despite the fact that he won the job. Week one, Vele had eight targets, eight receptions, but just 39 yards. Last week, played 62% of snaps, four for 78 with a 37-yard catch. So in the limited work we've seen of him, who would you rather play between those two? And I do mean, I, I, I'm not just, this is not a hypothetical that nobody has to think about. No, people this have is to, literally my choice. Pe people have to think about it. And between those two, I would go Bub Means. Um, Bo, Nix, Bo Nix is a better quarterback than Spencer Rattler. Uh, however, you know, Rashid Shahid and Chris Olave, you know, probably not playing with Bub Means there with the guy who has been – he's been practicing with him. Like Mike said, the backup quarterback and the backup wide receiver narrative, these guys have been working together. So I think Bub Means is – he's not a good start because this is a very difficult Broncos defense. I don't think there are the Saints good defense starts defense is here. the easier defense to play against. Yes. We saw Baker carve it up. And you've got a better quarterback in Knicks, and so, but the bet, the bet feels bad on the Denver side because you don't know which guy is going to get the opportunities. Uh, so, Cortland Sutton should be the primary read. I mean, so far to this season, he hasn't been phenomenal, but he's, you know, the last couple of weeks you're talking about, you know, the wide receiver twenty five, the wide receiver twenty four, two of the three weeks he's getting the target share. Bo Nix is coming on, and this is this is a. Uh, one of those type of games where Sean Payton coming back to New Orleans, this is going to be an emotional game. Um, and, you know, the the team is really going to want to do it for, for the Broncos. I, I think I think Sutton is an okay play this Denver week. is going to New Orleans. New Orleans 2-4 and four now, Jason. So they went 2-0. and oh, We built you a little thermometer, and they've lost four straight games. Denver's 3-3 three and three right now. The DK Sportsbook line on the game is Denver minus 2.5 on the road. Wow. So they're the favorites. So they have... The over-under is just 37. 11 more games? Am I doing that right? Six. Yep, they've said, that's so, correct. So if they lose two more – wait, what I'm trying to do math up. <laughs> You're trying to see <laughs> what – not that advanced no. math here. Okay, what, what is it? How it's many more seven. games? They need to, they need to lose uh, – uh, So three eight, more. They need to lose eight games. Eight games, okay. Eight games. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, I look, I'm not worried. I'm not shaving my <laughs> head for uh, the reason of the Saints winning. But that means they got to go eight and f eight and no eight game eight losses will end it. So they need to go nine and three. Yeah, it's not happening. You I should don't, probably I, shave it anyways, though. Yeah, no, I know, I know. I was hoping I had an excuse <laughs> that wasn't just my balding nature. Do you want to nature? make some more bad bets? Because right. we could do some Troy Franklin. I'll tell you stuff. what. If they get to five wins, I'll shave my head. Um, you might be safe. Yeah, I think I would. I mean, the, the, the season has gone sideways there. Um, Matthew Betts put out a tweet, and he said the injury list for the Saints right now looks like a CVS receipt, you know, because you don't have Carr. You still have a limited Camara. You don't have Olave. You don't have Shahid. What's up with that? What's what's up with what's, the CVS receipts? 
Why are they well, so big? Why, is it, why is it legal? Why is it legal for them to do what, that? What is this like? An uh, you're trying to save the trees? It's Dude, very wasteful. If you want to save the trees, you can look at one thousand businesses and change how they operate, or just CVS. Because when I get a CVS receipt, it's like they receipts don't even feel like paper, though. You know what I mean? It feels like feels like plastic. Santa Claus's list they have is been changing, shorter. Though. I mean, I don't look. Uh, hashtag not a sponsor either of these companies, but I'm a Walgreens man, and Walgreens <laughs> is like, do you want to e- do you want me to email you the receipt? And I say, does it come as a giant email? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be amazing if you had to scroll. <laughs> it's so it's far. five individual. Everything is itemized Just into individual advertisements. Yeah. I mean, they're I selling the bottom of the CVS receipt is like the survey. It's coupons, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't like know. That. I don't read it. I mean, old, nobody does. Hey, hey, do this survey for us, and you might win ten dollars. Oh my gosh! But but look, we've talked about a lot of things other than starting players in this. Do team. you play? No. Javante, I knew that was I knew that was the name and no Javante Williams, who let's see. So last week, it was still, uh, whatever. 55! It was still fifty five percent of the running back attempts. Oh, like, I knew that couldn't have been the yards. No, no, no. A nineteen percent target share. Like this, his utilization is. He lost a fumble. Is a, yes, he did, but it's 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 elite utilization, or is this a? I wouldn't call six attempts elite utilization, and betting on no, him no, no, receiving no, the but, football. But percentage, is terrifying. But percentage of the work is like this is how this is how we get points. So it's just do you you have been happy Javante? one time in six weeks, and then on the road against New Orleans with Estime back, that'd be the bet that I'd be betting against if you don't have another choice. Like I'd. The real question is, would you rather flex one of these dart throws at wide receiver or would you rather flex Javante? Well, I would never flex anyone on Thursday night football, Andy. They will be in my running back or wide receiver spot. Well, How- no, listen. That might be true. That might not be true. Really? I mean, we, we always tell you to do that, but sometimes you do you do get boxed in by the, amount, the players that you have. I mean, if you're still waiting on another decision, you might get boxed in. But um, which would you play? I think I'd still play Javante. Yeah. Three fantasy points. Yeah. I mean, really, I, the, it was the, terrible. Doing the, three fantasy points on six targets is an impressive feat in and of itself. Fumbling. Yeah. I mean, so so what? there you go. Hey, there's there's five the player. Mike one. would play Javante Williams. Mike, Javante Williams. Put those two things together in your brain. Yeah, this is a low-scoring affair that without a defensive touchdown, I don't feel like it's going to get to 37 total points. Both defenses, right? Both defenses are in play. Alvin Kamara obviously in play. And then outside of that, I mean, we talked about sudden. There's things to watch. There's a lot of things to watch. The youth movement for Denver, I'm excited to watch that. I want to see Vele. I want to see Franklin. I want to see Bo Nix. I, I want to see Estime. I didn't hear Marvin Mims in there. I want to see Marvin Mims. You sure. can want to see him. That he, same targets won't. as Troy Franklin last week. Just throwing it out there. Uh, but, you know, outside of, like, what to watch for. Mims for life! <laughs> there's not a lot of fantasy-relevant stuff here. We should do a... Uh, a, a senseless Mims Franklin bet just to have something to care about on Thursday night. Okay. And I realize I'm on the like, give me odds I, because of snap counts. He was 66. Mims was like 30 something. Same targets. Give me two to, you know. I'll give you a two point fantasy gap. Troy Franklin will outscore. All right. $100. $100. I, unless the bet is null if no one scores any fantasy <laughs> points. Oh yeah, that's fine. Well, if it's zero zero, yeah, because I'm not giving you the gap until until my guy has at least two. Oh okay, couple dudes running routes, man. <laughs> All right, I don't feel like I want to talk no, about any more of this no. game. Play both defenses. Yeah, let's take a break. We'll hit the mailbag. All right, it's time to get you ready to win in week seven. Bag. Bang, boom, bang, boom. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. <laughs> sir, that sir, sir. That's my airspace? <laughs> so no fly zone? I was supporting you. I was congratulating you. Yeah. I was mm-hmm. waving from the from the ground looking at that beautiful jet flying overhead. You're saying I'm not allowed to wave? No support needed. Okay. Stay in your lane. 
funny I'm boy. Get, I'm going to get a rocket launcher. Watch <laughs> out for next week. I'm shooting those planes down. We have lots of questions. We've got a voicemail channel. We'll get into that. You can dial it, 302-464-TFFB. Leave us a voicemail. You can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Submit a question over there. We like to um, get you ready for the upcoming week, answer these questions. Our goal is never to tell you you know, exclusively what to do because every league is different. We, we're big on the context of your league, the scoring system, the amount of players you start, the other players you have on your team, the opponent you're playing. Our goal is to illustrate based on what we see on film, what we see in the box scores and all of the advanced metrics and kind of lay out the case for and against starting certain players and giving you the best odds because we don't know what's going to happen on Sunday. We just give you the best opportunity to uh, to make an informed decision. That's the goal here. Let's start with a voicemail question because we'd like to help with league issues as well. What's up, Ballers? Uh, I had a question. I'm the GM for my league, and I have a player who's inactive. Is it more fair to let him not set his lineup every week or should I set him to the AI controlled and let the AI make changes for him, trying to figure out what is more fair for the league? Thanks. Yeah, I, I don't. At first, I thought you were going to say, "Do you set the lineup?" And I don't. I don't suggest that with you participating in the league. I like play. I like turning that into a game against the league median. That's the way that I would do it, um, as opposed to having the AI run. And make decisions. Well, the, 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 again, the question was, we have a manager not setting their lineup. What do you do? It's it's a actually very complex and difficult question because the, the I think you're fine if you're like, oh, the AI. Well, just whatever the projections for the platform is, that's the players that are going to go in. But that team might have a full roster right now. And next week, they may not. I mean, like waiver moves have to be made for this team because – Bye weeks. Yeah, you're going to have the bye weeks, and, and then someone's going to go up against that team, and they're down two or three players. That doesn't feel very fair when someone had to play against a full team. So, you, see, I, I I understand that there's nuance. There's never going to be a great answer when you've got an inactive member, but you have to set the lineup to the best of that team's ability because let's let's say uh, the schedule bears out, and I don't play this guy anymore, but you sure do. And we're competing against the playoffs. Why yeah. do you get to play against a, a dead team and get an auto win? That's that's not good for the integrity of the league. That I agree. Whoever plays against it. And so you could do it a number of different ways. You could do it like Andy said, where you're just taking the league median, basically the average score of the league, and that if you are um, you know, if you're one of the teams that scored in the top six if it's twelve team league, or top five if it's a, a ten team league, then you would get the W against the uh fake opponent. I'm also fine just setting the lineup based on basically just like what what's the projection, set their best lineup, and then move move forward. Yeah, unless you have to make waiver moves. Yeah, I mean – That's you, the hard part is you probably will. Based it, on the way this season's going, Jason? I, so here would be my rule that I would say if you have to make waiver moves because they have bye weeks or injuries or you know they can't feel the roster, I would say you wait until Saturday – and then you pick up the whatever waiver asset has the highest projection for that oh, position. Yeah, it's not bad. And that's it. It's just it, that way. It's a rule. This is no. This is no. Uh, you can't have someone making what they believe is a good decision or a bad decision. It's all just what is the projections of the platform. That's what they get. And move on. Or alternatively, yeah, the better option, make, find somebody. Yeah, was, that's what I was gonna say. Go to FootClanLeagues.com um, or to our Discord. Discord uh, for the fantasy footballers. It's free. You can go to Discord. Find someone who wants to take this over. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough because I'll, I'll bet they've got a bad record. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're uh, we're going into week seven here. You want to take over this team that's one in five? And it's, it's a lot, a lot of lovely people It's out a lot there. of work to do the like uh, procedural, I'm going to sign this guy versus that guy. And, you know, it, it's tough. It's not an ideal situation. You really got to fix that in the offseason. But in the meantime, those are some other options you can go with. Uh, first question we got from X uh, come, came in from Skyler. David Njoku or Evan Ingram rest of season? I only want to roster one tight end. That that's an easy Evan Ingram. Um, despite Andy and I believing in Njoku, they're very similar. Short, you know, participation, heavy targets. One of them has a legitimately okay quarterback. Right? Yeah, Njoku is the much more athletic, explosive player. That's what we saw at the end of last year, where he can take a short area target and 
I mean, man, his numbers were outrageous last year. Outrageous. Or would you consider Njoku over Ingram here? No. Okay, I didn't think so. No. Um, it, it, maybe if they bench. Like, that is not impossible. Like, owners could bench, make the call and bench Watson. That I feel like owners are already making the call to not bench him. Uh, I mean, for now. For now. I'm just saying, like, at some point in time, the Ben Simmons situation happens. Give us change. And if Jameis came in, it like changes everything. that is very, it's a very big deal. And who knows? Jerry Judy could be relevant at that point in time. Instagram question from Steph. Is Nick Chubb an immediate start? No, 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 no. no, no. He is an absolute must grab mustache, but you have zero idea. Pierre Strong Jr. could end up with 65% of the work and they give Chubb five carries to kind of we Test from- out the the contact. You, you have no idea the utilization. Well, I mean, let's not forget they're starting running back right now. Deonta Foreman. Oh, I, he, I, he's, you they, think it'll be Foreman? I think Pierce Deonta Strong Foreman is at every turn they have given him way too much opportunity. Yeah, the last week it went pretty in Pierre Strong's favor. I think he was fifty three percent of the snaps. Yeah, Foreman played eleven 30, opportunities. Foreman played thirty five percent. If you of the were snaps. spot starting one of them, though. When you lost Ford, I mean, is is that who you're going with, Strong? I think I, think I would go yeah, Strong. I just go for strong. pass catching ability, or yeah, and they just, I mean, how many how many weeks has Foreman actually? Did you still have his his thing pulled up? Sure. Yeah, like done, not done stuff, but opportunities of note. He, so he had that one crazy week. The where, last the last two weeks he's had ten and twelve opportunities, which okay. is still not a All great right. number. Uh, week two he had forty, but he, I mean he's you know he hasn't done anything with them. Uh, Would date. you start Javante or Pierre Strong this week? I'd play Javante. Man, those stink. I, w- I think I would go Javante. YouTube question. Um, the Sax loan writes in and says, when you have a su- surplus of one position and a lack of another but are winning games, is it really worth making a trade to balance your team? Not to balance your team, but to improve your team. Like I, yeah. I'm not trying to just – replace a running back with a wide receiver or a wide receiver with a running back of the same tier. What I'm trying to do is look and say, like, if I've got if I've got a guy on my bench that I can't really get into this position group and I can package him with one of the other position groups to just make a serious upgrade, I would do that almost every time. Yeah, it, the depth versus level up decision making that you have to do for your team is very hard. Because I, I always try to put some trust in the fact that I'm going to go find guys on the waiver wire that after a couple of weeks are valuable. Like uh, there's been three times this year I've made trades that are two for one level ups in our league of record. And they were contingent on somebody on my bench being good. You know, uh, picked up Darnell Mooney off of the waiver wire. Darnell Mooney puts up a big game. He's part of a trade offer. You know, you, you do free up when you do a two for one, three for one, you free up the opportunity to sign players. Um, if you see weaknesses on your team, you should always be, you should, it was part of our 10 things to remember, right? Mm-hmm. You don't want to settle for what you think you have because it will change. The injuries this year have been outrageous. Yeah, Most players right now are stuck in a position of how do I fit enough players on my team because I don't have enough IR spots and you know, do I have to trade an injured player to just free up an opportunity to start somebody? Jason has a couple I teams. Wanna, I just want to die. <laughs> My my teams. I was I was looking I'm at it. I'm oh, shocked you no. haven't traded those players to give you flexibility. Well, in in some leagues, it's possible if you're a dynasty or keeper, and in others, because it's all of them right now. Um, in others, people don't want an injured player. Um, you know. Yeah, I got my own. <laughs> right. I don't need yours. Yeah, it's it's been tough. But to speak to the never being content when you're doing well. That was Mike's tip last year. He followed his practice and won in our Dynasty League. Both of these two gentlemen, who I apologize, both these two scumbags what? here. No, How no. You point How out? I'm pointing out you two. You two scumbags Alrighty. have just literally yesterday taken your own advice here, and both of you went out and added an exceptional player to your different leagues um, where, Mike, you're the Dynasty League champion. You went out and you paid up for Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, I'm pretty scared about it. <laughs> I'm, it's a risk, right? But you yeah. weren't resting on your laurels. You added him to the chance to back-to-back. And, Andy, you did this Amari Cooper trade with other pieces 
upgraded to Jamar Chase. You're just not resting on your laurels. Both of you have good teams. Both of you are in position to try to repeat those leagues. What was Therefore, your, what you're was scumbags. Your, what was your big move? Oh, I lost players, dude. I lost Chris Olave. <laughs> I lost. You just you know look at the injury report, and then that, those them? are those are my moves. Uh, this start is wild to me, but I'm going to read it. Instagram says week seven, James Connor, tank Bigsby. Bigsby's got new England in London, Connor. Uh, and he's obviously sharing some time with, um, uh, what D Ernest D Ernest uh, too much time last week. And then James Connor's, uh, Monday night at home against the chargers. You know, this one's really, I'm on the Connor side, but I'm, maybe I'm biased. I'm on the you James. You are wearing a shirt <laughs> with James <laughs> Connor right now. <laughs> Concrete. <laughs> I, okay. It's That's pretty funny. It is probably James Connor, but it's it's the Monday night game, so we haven't heard anything yet out of Arizona. Regarding James Connor's health. Like he's probably fine. What do you mean? Uh, he he got he got banged up in the game, and then DeMarcado played a you, Go look at the snaps. But it was also yeah, but that game was, the game got out of control. I know. Quick. They're they're saying it was game script, but it's James Conner. That's all I'm saying is is wait like you need an actual practice report. If he so is, I didn't know he got hurt. Is what I, my face he is, le he left my face is he saying, came back. So um, he came back, but then he but then they were like, well, the game's out of hand. But that's a okay. It's a no, I did, I was unaware. I'm just reacting to the okay. news. I thought he came out because they were down. Six hundred to three. Well, yeah, he left initially to he, he got banged up. He did come back, but for the Cardinals, so he to, got to his take, ankles taped and then fumbled. For the for the Cardinals to say, "Oh, well, the game's over," and not play James Conner for that much of the game, that to me was enough for me to pay attention here of uh, of to the practice reports. Tank and the split with Tank and Dearness Johnson that was full on game script. So when when it's neutral. It will be Tank Bigsby if they're if they're losing to the Patriots by a lot. It'll be Dearness Johnson. Don't think that that's the case, but just pay attention to the the practice yeah, reports. It, as long as Connor's good to go, it's it, James Connor. It's a, it is a, a little bit closer tail than than we might think. I mean, if you look at the matchups as well, New England has not done a good job stopping the run this year, uh, mostly because they're down and the other team gets to run a lot. And the the Chargers have been one of the more difficult teams to run on. Partly because they slow the game down and make it just ugly football where no one is happy. Um, it's, it's high T stuff. Jay. You got to shut down the run. Tank Bigsby is a good play this week. I do think he's a good play. I, th I expect them to win that game. Um, That's also the the full assumption is Travis Etienne is out. <laughs> correct with the hamstring. Correct. So you know, wait for practice reports later in the week. Probably James Conner if he is missing fully if he's like a did not participate on a thursday even if he's active then i might switch t to tank yeah that's it's good information i didn't realize i thought uh thought he just came out after the fumble and they didn't bother putting him in but it looks like he had his ankle taped yep liam says dk metcalf or mike evans rest of season Ooh, i'm a i'm a metcalf i think i'm ah, i think i'm on the metcalf side they are playing so fast so furious, uh, yeah, and I it it didn't work out with the eleven targets. Just re we talked all about that game. Remember what happened? It was the weirdest stuff of of DK Metcalf, uh, getting the the play taken away from him. Some weird drop pi questionable stuff. But and Geno Smith is playing excellent football. Yeah, there were there were two touchdowns that were hairlines that away not, for but. for DK Metcalf. Right now, DK Metcalf is on. A 17-game pace of over 150 targets, over 1,300 yards, um, and I I do think the touchdowns are coming because we've seen him be a touchdown machine in the past in his career, and they they literally were right there last week. So I I like DK quite a bit. I think he's a great trade for candidate off of two mediocre weeks. Yeah, I'm for that. I'm with you guys. Uh, reminder, everybody, if your waivers went through this morning, which they did. Check the players that were dropped. Yes. Um, drop it like it's hot this week, especially anytime bye weeks are going on, players are going to get dumped. And if you uh, if you don't browse that, you're going to miss out on opportunities. So drop it like it's hot. Check it out. Tomorrow we'll get into starts of the week and the matchups, and we'll get the parlay parte out there and a whole lot more. Check out jointhefoot.com. Become a member of our community of incredible Foot Clan supporters and get access to the ultimate dashboard coming soon to a mobile device near you. All right, that's it. That's it. Get well, James Conner. Goodbye.
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.